Hi. Hi, Elizabeth. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Happy Friday. Yes. Thank you. Happy Friday. And welcome everyone to the Mom Projects Masterclass, How to Return to Work in Uncertain Times. I'm Elizabeth Shackelford, and I'm so excited to moderate today's discussion with our return to work experts, Susan Rotano davy and Kelly Biskubiak of Prepare to Launch You. In the session today, Susan and Kelly will answer your questions and share tips for relaunching your career in a declining economy. Tips that are important in any job market, but even more important now. Mm -hmm. Before we start, a few housekeeping notes. This session will be recorded and shared afterward by email to everyone who registered. And we will have time for audience questions near the end. So please put your thoughtful questions in the chat. Oh, that way, in the chat box. Um, and a bit more about Susan and Kelly. They are co-founders and owners of Prepare to Launch You LLC, a global learning company that guides women through challenging work-life transitions via courses, webinars, and corporate engagements. They bring 30 plus years of complimentary experience to their work. Susan, with her background in big tech and years of coaching and placement, and Kelly, with her knowledge and education and years of personal coaching. Susan and Kelly's workplace insights are widely published. They are sought after guest speakers and facilitators at conferences nationwide, consultants to major corporations and universities, and LinkedIn learning author and instructors. Thousands of women worldwide have achieved career fulfillment with the help from Prepare to Launch You team and community. And we are so happy to have you back moderating a Mom Project Masterclass. Yes. We're, we're so happy, happy to be here. Thanks for inviting us. Yes. Yeah, we love Well, we love let's to get started. At this, time of, this, at this time of year in particular, because sure. this is when you really start thinking about relaunching your career because yeah. people are back in school and you have like just the bandwidth to even think that it's a possibility. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I know you guys have a brilliant presentation, yep. so we'll, I'll let you take it from here and I'll see you guys afterwards for some questions. All at right. the end. Great. Great. All right. Brilliant. Boy, we better. <laughs> brilliant. And well, I was feeling like a little bit of pressure after that whole intro. Yeah, I was like, like, good Lord. Gosh, we really are good. Okay. Um, so or can we make that bigger or? Uh, I don't think so. That's, okay. That's what we got going. Okay, good. <laughs> so a little bit about us. Uh, we're both moms of four. Um, anywhere from two to 29. So we've got, we cover all age ranges and all stages of life. And we both took career breaks. Yes. We both did what you did. And we both returned to work successfully, ultimately finding each other. Right. And um, in the intro, it said 30, yeah. but it's actually 40. really 40, which 40 plus years of experience helping women. Combined. Right. Yeah. Combined. Yes. Yeah. Um, helping women navigate work and life transitions. And mm -hmm. that really is something that we hang our hat on. There mm -hmm. are 360 degrees of who you are. Yeah. Um, and there's that personal side and there's that professional and side. And because we've been doing this for so long, we have worked through up and down economies. We've guided women through all kinds of conditions, including those much, much worse than we're in right now. Um, as, as Elizabeth mentioned, we are sought after experts in our field. We're really focused in this area. We're not just general coaches. Right. This is our lane. It's this transition piece, particularly the return to work. Um, with our help, clients from all over the globe now right. have returned to work. And if you ever venture over to our website, you'll see our expanding list of companies where our students have landed jobs after graduating from our programs. And today we're here to help you. Right. And we have extensive hiring and recruiting manager experience and insights. And with our help, they, we have launched clients, yeah. students um, from across the globe into really successful mm -hmm. return to work positions. So with any further ado about us, no, now out. enough about us, let's move on. We just want to make sure you know that we know what we're talking about. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, okay. So, relaunching a career is always hard, but some conditions can make it harder. And what we want to do with you here today is talk about three things that can help you in this particular market. Exactly. So, the first one is just kind of understanding basic economics. We know that the financial markets are feeling a pinch. So, if you are looking for a job at Goldman Sachs, you know, maybe you want to either reset your expectations or expand your search a little bit because they're really acutely feeling that punch. But that is, it takes a long time for other markets to respond and feel the pinch as well. And it's really important to note that we are coming out of one of the most robust job markets, the most robust in our lifetimes and yours ever. So it's going to take a long time to go from many, many openings and fewer candidates than there are jobs to flipping that. Right. So we are not in anything close to a crisis situation. Right. Really important to know. So just to 
bring that stress bring level down. down. And I think the other thing is, even when we're in a really terrible market, when we have unemployment of six yes. or seven percent, there's always a way. But think about that: mm -hmm. if six or seven percent is bad unemployment rate, that still means that ninety three percent of people are gainfully employed. Right. So a lot of it is, and Kelly's going to talk to you about mindset. A lot of it is just how you are looking at the news, how you are taking and receiving the news, yes. and what you're doing with it. Well, and doing it educated. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big piece. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna dive into that a little right. bit as we move on. Um, so just let's talk about that exceptional brand. That's part two. Right. right. So when the market is the way it was a year ago, you could have kind of an eh resume, right. LinkedIn. You could not even have a LinkedIn. You could not meet all the job requirements. You could be, you know, maybe not so great in your interview. And you could still land the job. Mm -hmm. That's not going to be the case now. As a hiring manager, I'm going to be a little bit more discerning. I may have. Uh, you know, the the I might have a slightly tighter target for jobs. Maybe I used to be able to fill 40 on, on a year. Now I only get 20. So I'm going to be a little more selective. And that's going to require you as a candidate to have exceptional brand clarity. You need to know what your brand is. You need to con con convey it in a re really clear and compelling way. We're going to talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Right. And then the last one is multiple options and being a bit creative mm -hmm. about how you're coming at that. And we're going to help you with that creativity exactly. and how to come and, at And this. it's always about options. What I always yes. say to our, our students, even in a, in, a, in a boom economy, I would say, you don't start, right. stop looking for a job until you have already started the first job and you've gotten your first paycheck. Yeah, one of her like Susanisms is and like lots of irons in the fire. You have to have that. It's even more important now. So it's not only having the multiple irons in the fire. Now it's also being a little bit more creative about how you look at what you're trying to get, what kind of job you're trying to land. Right. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Great. So. So, so the three pieces of what we're calling kind of the hard times toolkit. There are three pieces. We're going to dive into each one. Right. And the first. And the first one really is your mindset. Mm -hmm. And good managers always look for great talent no matter what. Mm -hmm. But you must let them know that you're a great talent and you must believe that you are a great talent. And we work with you. Like, on a regular basis, we know who you are. You are great talent. So you have to believe that yourself because that energy comes through. It does. And really the mindset is going to either make or break your success. And Absolutely. it can really do either one well, quite well. It can start you or it can have you sitting exactly. not doing anything. Exactly. So, yeah. Then the second piece is your brand. We mentioned that earlier. You have to know who you are, what you bring to an organization, what you want, and also what differentiates you from all the other people that are applying to those same jobs. And the most important piece is you need to be able to convey it to me clearly, me, the hiring manager, and in a memorable way. Remember that the people you're talking to, whether it's a frontline, you know, first step recruiter or a hiring manager are talking to a lot of people. And having sat on that side of the desk for a while, I'm ashamed to say that there are some people I interviewed and the two days later, I forgot them. And others who I remember 15 years later, you want to be the memorable one. We're going to help you with that. Right. And then the last one is you have to have a plan and it has to be well thought out. Um, and it has to have these strategies and tools that we are going to give you um, really well positioned so that people can see you. So that hiring manage can, managers can yeah. really see you and hear you and want you want to bring you in. Right. And, and, the stra and, the, and having the plan also holds you accountable. Right. You know, we talk a lot, we've talked in other webinars about having an accountability partner. It's a really good idea to help you execute the plan and setting, like our students who are most successful, really sit down and set targets every week. These are the things I'm going to accomplish. And sometimes it's a numeric target. Yep. Sometimes it's more of a conceptual target, but setting that plan, writing it out and getting moving on it. So let's unpack each one of these. Let's talk about mindset first, because that's where it all starts. Right. So the number one aspect of yourself that you need to get in touch with is how am I talking to myself? What am I actually saying to myself? What are those negative mindsets? Awareness is everything because then you can actually do something about it. If you are aware, here is how I'm speaking to myself because it will hold you up. Whether you could tell me that it doesn't, I am telling yeah. you with plenty of years of experiences, it really is holding you up. So some of these negative voices might come as doubt. Who am I to think that I can do this? Yeah. You know, this. It, it, in, as I'm going through these, if any of these really like resonate with you, you can either pop it in the chat or you can just like make a note. Okay, that is the way I'm speaking I'm to myself. That, yeah. yeah, fear could be 
what um, what if I can't meet expectations? What if I am not skilled enough? What if I am not ready enough? What if, you know? And that can pop up now only because when things get more competitive, you might be a little more nervous about what's expected of you in a job if you do land the job. Yes. So then you might just pull back and say, you know what? If I, I'm not going to be able to meet expectations. I'm not going to even bother putting myself in there. And you yep. go all the way down. Yep. The line. So then there's shame and that could be my skills are too dated or I'm too old. We hear we that, hear that a, lot. a lot. We hear that from like 38 year olds. Yes. And Hello. yes. And You're the not. reality is whether you have a three year gap or if you have a 18 year gap, your skills, you they still matter mm -hmm. and they still make a difference. And you really are never too old. That's right. Um, and then defeatism, which is no one is even going to hire me in this market. So if you are experiencing. That's an easy one to get into right now. Like why even bother? Well, because because we've actually, the reason why we came to the mob project and said, can we talk to you about this was because we are get constantly getting asked this question. What's going on in the market right now? What's mm -hmm. happening in the market? How is that going to affect us? And it's a big piece of it is what you're hearing in our media. And so you have to be educated about what's happening. And Susan's going to talk to you a little bit more about that because that education of knowing that economy mm -hmm. 101 of what's happening really can be very empowering to, to quiet those negative voices exactly. that say like, maybe that that's not for me. That's actually not something I should be listening to. Kind right of now. like we're quieting the um, lawnmowers that decided to- The lawnmowers our, and, my two, and my two-year-old because we are, have a child care issue here today. So, you know, we're, we're, we're living, living your life. Yeah, we're living your life. <laughs> Um, but what we teach in to our students, what I teach to my individual clients is this idea of combating versus compiling. And here is how we can quiet those negative mindsets when they pop up. And you have about a five second opportunity to quiet those voices. And as you do this, as you put this into practice on a regular basis, you are actually um, building those neural pathways in your brain for positivity. So your brain will start to default to the positive rather than the negative. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about compiling, we talk about you know, if you are surrounded by people or if you are listening to the news or reading the news that's coming up on your phone, we are, you know, going into a recession. If you are constantly feeding yourself with that negativity and even seeking it sometimes or yes. sharing it into the world. Yes. Right? You're feeding the beast. Yeah. If you are repeating these things that we just talked about above in your mind, you are feeding that beast. You are compiling and that is going to grow the fear and that's going to keep you stuck. Now, we can do things to combat that. One of the top ways that you can do that is surrounding yourself with people who are speaking to you. Just by being on this mm -hmm. webinar today, you are already going to get that inspiration, that truth that you can believe in that's going to propel you forward. So if you are putting the positive aspects of things around you, if you're actually putting the tools into play that we're going to teach you here today, then you are going to combat those mindsets because you're not focused on the negativity. Mm -hmm. You're focused on that positive way of being and you're moving yourself forward. I think part of it also is what you seek. Yes. You know, there's plenty of negative news out there and you can look for it. Yeah. And the algorithms in those news sites, whether it be a social media site or more of a business site, they know what you're looking for. Right. They're going to, to continue to feed you. So if you start changing that dynamic by stopping looking at those types of articles, you'll be fed more of the positive news. Yes. Too, so. And you bring that energy. Mm -hmm. You bring that energy to every networking conversation that you have, yeah. every possible like explore and assess. Yeah. You bring it with you. So you want to be bringing bring the positive. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk so about your brand. Two. So your brand, I mean, I'm not, I've never been a big fan of the word brand to talk about a human being, but it's a it's commonly used and it's pretty easily understood. It's what you bring to the table. It's what you offer. It's what you want. It's what how you differentiate. So you convey your brand through story. You'll, you'll know, notice that I said earlier that you need to be memorable. We mem remember people who tell us stories. We don't remember people who tell us. Well, we are hardwired for stories. That's true. We actually, yeah. don't you love a good story? Mm -hmm. You remember people mm -hmm. because of what they say to exactly. you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So your story has to connect the dots. All of you, by virtue of being here, have a somewhat unconventional career history. Don't expect me, the hiring manager or the recruiter, to connect those dots. I don't have enough time. It's not my job. You need to tee it up for me. So make sure that you are connecting the dots of your story to make it very clear to me that this is how 
This theme has repeated itself throughout my history. This is why I'm here today. Um, one common method, we use a different one in our course, but the commonly known one is called the STAR method, where you talk about, well, here's my situation. And what it does is it gives you a structure for, for creating that story and remembering it so you can tell it. Here was a situation. These were the tasks that I had in front of me. These are the actions that I took, and these were the results. This is where we often find women falling short, not being bold about taking credit for those results. Don't talk in the we. Don't talk in the collective. Talk about you. This is what I did. This is what I accomplished. This is the hurdle I overcame. This is the problem I solved. Right. So the story is a piece. We're going to get to a little more specifics on story in a moment. The most important, I would say equally important piece of that story is who are you going to tell it to? Yes. I'm going to tell a different story. One of the examples I use in our program is for fun, I teach bar and yoga and Pilates. I've been doing it since college, right? I don't talk about that when I'm pitching our business. They don't care that I do that. It's right. irrelevant. I know my audience. You have networked. Because well, that's true. I taught a yoga <laughs> class out in Utah once by accident. But that's just good to know. That's true. Right. Yeah. Um, you're absolutely right. But the, the, the core of what I'm pitching when we're pitching our company is we are return to work experts. So focus on your audience. Who do you want to reach? Or what organization do you want to reach? And what do they need to hear? Yes. What do they need to hear to be convinced that you're someone worth bringing to the fold? Yes. And then consider how your story is going to be told. Because the story doesn't change, but it does come out in different permutations. So on your resume, it's going to be shorter. It's going to be bulleted. It's going to have more numbers in it. In LinkedIn, you're going to be a little bit more personal. It's going to have a narrative kind of in between, because then in conversation, you won't be listing bullets, you'll be talking about your experience. So understanding the different ways to tell that story, but keeping that story consistent. Now, back to story, this was actually, um, you got it? Go to the next oh, one. there, okay. Yeah, um, in the last webinar we did for the mass, for um, the mom project, I think it was in the spring, we were talking very specifically about story, but we thought it would be helpful to bring this slide back. Yeah, teaching this, I think, is because if we're really focused in this market on being memorable, you have to get this. This is something you have so to get. So these are the three essentials. Now, your details will be different. Your story will be different, but these three factors have to play in when you have a career break. And the first one is, I loved my work. I was really good at it, and it was a sacrifice to leave. But given my alternatives at the time, I had a dying spouse, I had an ill parent, I had a new baby, whatever it is, it was the right decision and I'm glad I made it. And that is it. There's no apology. Right. There is no extra detail. It's just a blip. Right. And then you move on. During that break, I tapped into, I even perfected my skills and experience because I was leading this or advocating for that or doing whatever. And I learned some new skills too. So now you're taking that break, creating some value for it, and even showing how that time was not just stopgap time, that was growth time, right? And then wrapping it up. I'm so excited to bring everything I've learned, both during my great days in tech and all these years that I've had leading my community to work for you. Right. So Those three elements have to be part of every story. So take a screenshot of this particular yeah. slide because this is that piece that is going to let you be very clean with your language. Yeah. And those are the things, the elements that need to be in your story. Now, one of the things Elizabeth mentioned at the beginning when she gave our lovely bio was that we do consulting with corporations. Let me tell you what I say when I'm standing, when we're standing on an audience, I look these hiring managers, executives in the eyes, and I say, how many of you have children? And most of them raise their hands. And how many of you ever give a second thought to whether the fields are clear for their practice? whether there are snacks after practice. How many of you worry about whether your classroom has Chromebooks in it or whether somebody's monitoring recess or chaperoning the field trip? How many of you are concerned about the trails in your community or the Sunday school at your worship center, right? And I kind of play it out. You don't have to worry about that because someone like me and someone like her, we're the ones doing that. We're the ones who left big jobs to stay home with our kids. And while we are raising our children, we are holding up the community. We're holding it up so well that you don't ever have to think about it. So don't you ever ignore us when we come back looking for a job. Don't you overlook us because we are the people you're counting on every day. So we want you, all of you watching right here and watching the recording to know and believe that. that we are out there pitching that message to them. Mm -hmm. 
And you should feel that confidence over for what you have done in your communities. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. So I'm off my soapbox. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But we need to get to number three, which is your plan. This is a non-negotiable. You have to have a plan. Mm -hmm. So you have to have these tools. You have to have that great mindset. You have to have that really compelling story. But then you have to have a plan to execute. Okay. So how? So on the strategic side, the most important thing is networking. Yes. And we do find that women are a little less comfortable doing that. We love helping everybody else. We're not as eager to ask for help. So networking is a non-negotiable. And that has to stop. It does. It has to stop because you need to be able to talk to people about who you are. That's mm-hmm. an important piece and not apologize for it exactly. or feel like it's not worth hearing because exactly. it absolutely is. And your network is bigger than you think. Mm-hmm. Start with your smallest circle. Everyone in your family, all of your close friends, everyone should know that you are looking to relaunch your, your Pilates career. class. <laughs> exactly. Your yoga instructor. Yeah. Um, an interesting point here is that we often think, well, you know, I can't, she doesn't work. I'm not going to talk to her. And, you know, she, she never had a job or, you know, she worked in a different field and I'm not going to talk to her. Don't worry about the person you're talking to. That person is a conduit to all the people they know. Right. So don't be too discerning. Let everyone know your hairdresser, your housekeeper, whoever it is, they may know the person that is going to help you get your next job. So letting them know, find the connectors, find the people in your community who know everybody and reach out to them. And a connector naturally likes to connect other people. This is kind of part of their whole raison d'etre. Well, in in this particular market, if things get more challenging, Mm -hmm. just allowing everybody to have eyes, you want all hands on deck. You want all hands on deck really thinking about you. And, you know, it's interesting. We were on a graduate call with our students yesterday, and one of our students was talking about how she just, you know, she talked to one person, and then it was like another person. And then it was all of a sudden she had all of these. And she's really shy. We were really proud of her for doing it. Yes, and she really has all these tentacles out now, and everybody wants to help her because they love her. Mm -hmm. You know, they think she's great, and they know what she has to offer. So especially in, you know, more challenging times, just knowing that you have eyes and, you know, all hands on deck out there Mm -hmm. looking for you is even more to your benefit. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. You need to tap into the hidden job market. So depending on whose statistics you believe, only 40 to 60% of jobs are ever posted. Think about that. It's about half of the jobs that are filled are never posted. Right. I know this from having worked in tech. You know, so-and-so, oh, God, I want to bring that person over. That person reached out. I'm going to bring them over. Sometimes I'll still post the job because I have to. Mm-hmm. But the job's already filled. Mm-hmm. So you need to create opportunity. Here are Three easy questions to ask to create opportunity. So you're sitting in a networking meeting. I'm meeting Kelly. I'm telling her I'm looking to go back to work. She's telling me about her organization. And I can say, you know, Kelly, where are you really feeling understaffed? Or what projects are being backburnered because you don't have anyone to do them? Or what jobs just have never been filled right. that are still staying open? Right. So find out where the need is. That's how you create opportunity. Well, really interestingly, you know, just going back to our students, yeah. the, um, you know, just late stage startups tend to yeah. have like a real yeah. need for that, for that help. So project work can yeah. be a great place. But the other thing to remember is that a job isn't posted right when the need presents right. itself. There are months before a job ever gets posted. That's when you want to strike. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So asking those questions to reveal opportunities that may not be posted yet. By the time a job is posted, there's only about a 25% chance it's even going to be filled. Right. Uh, which leads me to my next one. You should spend a minute amount of your time, no more than 10% on a job board. You should not be applying that way. Now, you can use a job board for Intel. It's a great research tool because it will tell you, gee, I'm seeing this company's got a lot of jobs posted. Or I can see this industry right. is really booming or this geography is really booming. That's fine. But you will not get a job by applying online. Even in the boom, boom of 2021, you still had maybe a 10% chance of getting a job. So don't put your time there. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay. And then consider and pitch your options. That's a really important piece. Yeah, it yeah. is. So you need to may need to flex your expectations a little bit. So I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but let's say you have this dream job at this dream organization in mind. Maybe you take the lesser job at the dream organization to get in the door yeah. or you take that dream role in a slightly lesser organization to get the experience to build your resume so that when something opens up at that dream organization you're, you're poised to take it but this is something 
when we see things tightening up, you might have to just flex your expectations a little bit Absolutely. and be a little more creative. Other ways to do that are to consider contingent or temporary work. So those questions that I just asked Kelly, you know, what projects have been back burner? Right. It's a great opportunity to go in and mm -hmm. take on a project. Say, you know what? I'm available to do that. I would love to do that. Maybe it's consulting, which is slightly longer term and maybe a little less specific. Maybe it's an internship yeah. or a returnship. And the mom project has postings for those as well. Yeah, we we were just before we yeah. got down, we were talking with yeah. um, Elizabeth and Courtney about the um, the session that was held yesterday with exactly the with Amazon. Around Amazon. And we have a couple of students who've taken those yeah. as well. Yeah. Now, one thing on returnships, you don't necessarily need to have a company that has a returnship. You can pitch your own. Mm -hmm. So don't be shy about that. They're commonly available at bigger organizations, but smaller organizations wouldn't have a returnship program because they're not big enough. But you could easily say, either in a networking call or in an interview, mm -hmm. if you're going through the interview and they're like, gosh, Kelly, I wish I could hire you. I just, my hands are tied. Right. I don't have hiring capacity right now. We have a hiring freeze. Well, that's fine. Let's talk about other options. You know, one thing that's been really popular lately is this returnship idea. It's an opportunity for me to develop my skills, learn a little bit more about the organization while being paid in anticipation of filling a, another job. Or if it's a job that you are supremely qualified to do, that's a great place to pitch the project. I understand. Mm -hmm. um, you may not be able to hire someone as a regular employee, but I'm available on a project basis. Just because the job is no longer posted does not mean the work goes away. Right. The work still needs to be done. So we had a client recently who was offered a job and it was rescinded the week right. before the start date. And our, our advice was go back. And remember, the work is still there. Go right. back and say, look, I understand the hiring freeze is in place. Let me come in. Let's work on this as a project. Okay. So just know that you've got to be a little more flexible um, when things tighten up, but you've got lots of tools available to you. Well, and we want, if you come in as a solution, mm -hmm. if you come, because the problem is there for that hiring manager, that problem has not dissipated because, um, you know, they just said that they have to, you know, do a hiring freeze mm -hmm. the problem and the work, like Susan said, is still there. But if you're coming in as a solution to that problem, that's going to get you heard. Yeah. And um, and it's also giving that hiring manager that opportunity to see, you know what, I, maybe I can start to think creatively about how we're going to weather this storm. Exactly. And, um, you know. It's giving opportunity, especially if you're out there doing this, it's giving opportunity for every woman behind you because you're educating them on how to think differently and creatively through a difficult market. Exactly. So let's talk about the story piece of thing. I had a little asterisk there before. So your resume and your LinkedIn profile are important assets. They are the way that you show your story. So they showcase your positive mindset, they convey your brand, and they open doors to execute that plan. And this is one of the slides we wanted to revisit for those of you who weren't at our last session, because we think it's really helpful for people who've taken career breaks to understand some essential rules about your resume and your LinkedIn. Right. So present your break years the same way you do your working years with a focus on actions. Yes. Not what I was responsible for, but what I did context and scale. So let's say you were the leader of a PTO and you grew donor revenue or donor um, contributions by 50%. You would put that in. If you recruited 300 volunteers or 30 volunteers to execute an event, numbers, accomplishments, dollars, percentages, all those things matter in the context of your community experience as well. And actually, Susan, I just want to say this. Yeah. So if you want like a more um, explicit teaching of all of this. Yeah. Um, we did a webinar for the mom project. I think it was in December of last year okay. about career gaps. Yeah. And it specifically teaches. It talks through yeah. exactly so, how to do it. Um, but it's just important. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. But just if you wanted to go back and like get more of an explicit teaching. So context scale. And then of course those measurable results. What did you accomplish? You can call it a break if you want. Um, we prefer that you don't. Right. Um, because you've done work during that time. Well, we have it. We have sort of a threshold. Well, there's a threshold. If you've yeah. only been out for a couple of years, then you just you can put nothing really or put a career break. But if you've been out, we have some of our graduates have been out for 23 years. Right. You can't just put career break. You need to show the things that you've done. Right. Now, LinkedIn has an option for calling a career break. Again, um, 
it, it, I don't think it's necessary. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid that if you do that, it kind of diminishes maybe what you've accomplished. And I say this a lot. I mean, I've been working for a while now since my kids were little. And if I were asked tomorrow in a oh, job yeah. interview, what my biggest accomplishments were, I would talk about some of the things I've done in tech or I did in tech, some of the things I've done as an entrepreneur, but some of the hardest work I've done has work has been work that I've done as a community leader. And I would absolutely talk about that. So it does have value and, and it does present as, as with rigor. Um, and then remember this also, your goal is always to get in front of someone, right? 90% at least of your time is spent doing this. So we wanted to review also our essential interview and networking ground rules, that kind of action piece of your strat of your of your plan. So introduce the gap yourself. Don't wait. So when the person asks you, it's, you'll always get some version of this question, either in a networking call or an right. interview. So why are you here? Tell me about yourself and start right away. Own the narrative. Don't make them wait to ask you the question or don't make, make yourself wait to ask the question. Well, what did you do? Why does it look like you worked on Wall Street and then now you were like at the PTO? Own it. Tell the story yourself boldly and confidently using that template that we talked about. You know, I was really great at what I did. I loved it. Then I took a break. This is what I did during my break. And now I'm ready to come back. Right. Okay. Just like that. Yeah. You're not getting into like the depths of everything that happens kids to you, you have and that, or, you know. or all of the obstacles that you've overcome yes. during that time. No. That is none of their business. Right. Let's be clear about that. You have about two people in your life that really need to know the full story. Mm -hmm. um, it's just using that quick. I was, I loved the work I did. I stepped out. This is I was the good stuff at I it. did. Yeah. This is the stuff I did when I was out and I'm excited to get back now. Right. Yeah. Right. And if the interviewer or the networking connection starts pushing you toward, well, tell me about your kids and, oh, how'd you like redirect? Don't fall into that trap. When they're asking those kinds of questions, they're not taking you seriously. You need to own the narrative. You need to take control and redirect back to the subject of hand at hand in the, in the interview. Mm -hmm. Follow the 90-10 rule. 90% of the conversation is about your qualifications. Only 10% about your break, and that should be right at the top when you tell your story. And script. Uh, we're big believers in writing yes. it out. We were here are our cards. We always, <laughs> we always have a stack of these uh, handy little index cards. We've killed a few trees in our time. Um, script it out. Practice it. Practice it in the car. Practice it on your phone. Script. Practice again. Practice it with people that you know you surround yourself mm -hmm. with. Like we talked about in the very beginning, that mindset piece of surrounding yourself with people. There are people on this call today that are all ha all have a very similar goal. So yeah. surrounding yourself with people that are going after that similar goal is far more impactful than you will really know or understand until you experience so true. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. All okay. right. So again, remember your hard times toolkit. Manage that mindset, be clear on your brand and put that plan in place because people are still hiring. Right. People will be hiring even as things get maybe more dire. Mm -hmm. You just need to be the candidate that stands out. And just because you have a career gap does not mean you don't stand out. In fact, we would argue that in many cases that has been right. the super, but that, that has been the reason mm -hmm. that the person's been hired. Right. Okay. Right. So just keep it simple. Keep mm -hmm. it to those three things. Okay. All right. So that is all we have. We wanted to allow a lot of time for talking. Let's just tell you, you can connect with us on any of those platforms. We really love to meet you, to engage with you through social media. You'll be getting an email from um, the Mom Project following up with a link to this if you had to drop out earlier or you came on late. And that will include some links to some free um, resources from us that will help you through some of the things that we taught you today. Also, a link explaining our upcoming fall cohort, our 10 week um, career relaunch course. There'll be information about that and applications and information sessions, et cetera. So look out for that email. And now we are all ears. What have we got? Amazing. Thank you. That was so informative. I always take copious notes, but I took a lot today. <laughs> that is I think we usually aim for like 40 minutes. We did that in 35. Yeah. yeah. I hope we didn't talk too fast. <laughs> no, no. And then it'll be helpful too for everyone to see the presentation later on and they can yeah, go yeah. back and review it. Yes. Great. Yes. So do we have questions? 
Yes. Okay. Kate wrote in, I'm still working on improving my networking skills. How do I reach out to my dream organization or search for opportunities, especially if I don't have great references? Sure. So here, Kate, here's where LinkedIn can really be a great tool for you. So I would recommend if it's an organization of any size, they'll have a LinkedIn page. Go to their LinkedIn page and just beneath the top banner, you'll see a vertical, a, a horizontal line that'll say like, you know, jobs, website, it'll say people, you want to click on people. Mm -hmm. And that will show you how many of their employees are on LinkedIn. So let's say there are 100 employees on LinkedIn. It's kind of a, it's kind of a big number to manage. So you'll filter it down. You can look for people who have maybe gone to your university, people who live in your city, people who whose job title is the job title you want. Um, and so look for people that way. Look for people on there that you connect with. So let's say you find someone from your alma mater right on that list, because that's a really good connection. We find like 80 to 90 percent success connecting with someone. I just want to say, I actually just want to say something yeah. before you continue with that, because one of the big hurdles that we see, especially with people with a gap on their resume that have lost their network, is that they're very reluctant to actually connect with people on that platform because they're afraid, well, well, they're going to be like, well, you were out for so long or I don't remember right. you. Connect with everyone. <laughs> and they all remember yes, you. And they all remember you and just connect with everyone. Connect with Everyone in your orbit, connect with, you know, people that you see on the sidelines at soccer games, things like that. Connect with everyone because you need that bandwidth of the network mm -hmm. to then do some of these strategies right. that Susan's talking about. Go ahead. Sorry. So now you found someone who went to your alma mater and really good chance they'll connect with you. So the key is just to ask for the low stakes. Ask for the connection first. Don't go deeper than that. So let's say Kelly went, to, hey, see, I see you went to the same school. Let's connect. Mm -hmm. Once they connect, then you go back and you say, thanks so much for connecting. You know, I'm really excited to join ABC or to learn more about ABC company. I'm in the um, process of pivoting. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if you might have 10 minutes to tell me about your experience there. Right. All right. People love talking about themselves. Maybe a 50-50 shot that they'll give you that 10 minute Zoom call. And then you're very organized. You don't waste their time. You ask them specific questions. And one of them will be, that one of we just role played, where are you really feeling the pinch? You know, where are you understaffed? What projects are being back burnered that, right. you know, are because of, of low staffing or whatever. So that's how you do it. The other way, the other back way, again, using the alma mater as kind of the driver, you all should join your alma mater's alumni networks. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the alma mater page, again, you can go to alumni, not the, even go to the alumni, there might be 14,000 or 100,000 alumni. Right. But again, sort it first by geography or just type in the name of the company. It'll show you everyone who either currently works there or has worked there. Don't ignore the people who used to work there. Absolutely. Because sometimes you can get better information from them. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. So Kate, hopefully that helps. Yeah. Okay. All right, Lauren asks, do you have any tips in career change? I am a special educator with many transferable skills. However, struggling to get past my resume and cover letter and in front of people to showcase those skills. Oh my God. Well, first, Lauren, we have to say we are seeing more and more of this with the high level yeah. of teacher burnouts post COVID. Yeah. Um, I've actually been doing a Kelly lot was an elementary of, school teacher. Yeah, I started my career in education, but um, I've been doing a lot of work in the community of educators just around that burnout. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of career change happen and you have so many transferable skills. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing that and understanding that, but being able to articulate that on your resume, LinkedIn profile is something that's really important. So it's almost critical that you are not applying. It's always critical that you're not applying online, but most business people will not understand the pivot from teaching a classroom to working in a corporate corporation. Right. And in fact, most companies are very myopic and they only want someone who's got exact skills maybe from a competitor. So you can't expect them to make that translation themselves. Yes. And they're not going to do it most likely. They're not gonna come your way just even if your cover letter is great or your resume is great. It's going to require networking. So, and being very clear about where you fit. Um, so definitely recommend when you're networking with people, it's going to be educating them and you are an educator on how those skills transfer. I mean, we've definitely seen students move from education into mm -hmm. L and D or yeah. development, but we've also seen some move into I'm thinking Samantha, mm -hmm. um, not tech on the, 
on the highly technical side, but on the client facing side and yes. customer experience. Yes. Um, so I think if you're not without knowing your specific situation, without knowing exactly what you want to do, there needs to be a very clear translation from what you did to what you want to do. And you need to be talking to other people who've done it. So our one, because when we finish one of these, we always follow up with some freebies for you. Are we doing explore and assess for them? Because that would be a great opportunity for this person to just sort of yeah. explore what is out there and have those conversations. We'll throw, and we'll know, put it in. Yeah, and know the script that you can use when you're having those conversations. Because Lauren, you really need to talk to people who've done it before you. Yes, because See. you need the language. And you need to be able to show yourself and a hiring manager that it's worked. Right. But we have definitely seen it. L and D is pretty obvious, but we have seen people move into client facing roles, account manager roles. Mm -hmm. um, and the explore and assess piece that Kelly's talking about will help you understand, okay, these are the missing pieces because there yes. may be a simple skill set that you can develop to help increase your chances. Yes. Okay. I mean, we have, we just had Christy, yes. we had a student on our call yesterday who is a biology teacher. Right. Um, high school level, and now she's working in real estate for a top producer as her right-hand person. She's running her social media. She's doing all of her events. She's ne negotiating with banks. She's doing all kind of the back office There are work. no better multitaskers and project managers than teachers. Or moms. <laughs> yeah. Good luck, Lauren. All right. Lena asks, do we connect only when we are ready to come back. I'm not sure when I'll be returning to work. No, I think it's great to do it before, but your LinkedIn has to be really good mm -hmm. because you're typically when you ask to connect with someone, they're going to look at your LinkedIn. So don't be premature in creating a really good page. Right. That's, that's mm -hmm. essential. Right. So assuming that you've done the work um, to create a really good LinkedIn page, then absolutely connect. You're not making any, any commitment by connecting with people. You're not even making a commitment if you're networking with people. Well, and I think starting out in connecting in a low stakes way, you're not going to go from zero to 60 and right. be asking for a job. Right. Really, so this, this technique of explore and assess that we teach um, is a great tool to use in a lower stakes way to start to connect and have conversations to educate yourself about what's happening in your particular industry that you're trying to target, or just a great way to find a mentor or someone who is going to help you through this process. Um, and so you don't want to start by connecting and specifically asking for a job unless you really have locked up that resume, that LinkedIn profile, all of those things. And we believe very, very strongly that there is a bunch of pre-work that needs to happen so that when you are speaking to the audience that you're targeting, you are confident, you are clear, and you are articulate because you will get missed. We promise you, you will get missed. Mm -hmm. If you jump right to a resume and a LinkedIn profile and you haven't done the pre-work, the pre -work, foundational that work. foundational work of understanding who you are, and what audience you are speaking to. Um, and we see with a career gap, sometimes we're murky about that. Sometimes we're murky about because we've been so focused on everyone else, mm -hmm. who we even are at that point. And that energy comes through, even in a written document. Mm -hmm. um, it makes you either look scattered or they can't quite understand what story you're trying to tell or who you're even targeting. So um, that- And you don't get a second chance, happens. unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes you do, but- when you're making those first connections, yeah. they're going to look at your profile and maybe make a mental note of that could be positive or negative. Yeah. So that's why if you are just, you know, getting started on some of this stuff to do explore and assess more of just to get yourself educated about that particular industry that you're targeting mm -hmm. or, you know, another thought for Lauren too, is it's perfectly advisable to use a platform like Dan or even Facebook to say, Hey, I'm a teacher looking to pivot into X. Anybody knows someone I could talk to. Right. 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 And the bigger your network, the more likely, or you could put some hashtags in there so it gets a little bit more traction. Mm -hmm. um, but don't be afraid to do that kind of stuff. And Facebook, that would be actually probably a good question for Facebook too or Instagram. Anybody right. know any teachers who mm -hmm. live into finance? Yes. Or tech yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Because you don't know how wide your net is. You know, you share something and then someone else shares it exactly. to their friend and their friend. Exactly. Which I, yeah, something happened to me yesterday where I was like, someone connected with me who I share, you know, it's just the web is wide. Yeah. Exactly. 
All right, Casey asks, how do we look for and ask for flexible work options like work from home or a flexible schedule? I love this question. My last company was a flexible work consultancy. So um, a lot of the companies that have flexible work policies have them because of the work that my old partners and I did. Um, so first of all, you don't look for it. Most, If I'm a hiring manager, every hiring manager wants to hire a 20 year old with advanced degrees and 30 15 years, of experience. years of experience and no kids, <laughs> right? Like that person doesn't exist. Um, so that's who they want. They're not going to say, Hey, you know, come and work three days a week or work school hours for us. So, and if they do, they tend to be lower level jobs. I can say for my last company, we did the consultancy. We also did placement and we placed CFOs, we placed CMOs, we placed, um, you know, director level, VP level people on flexible and part-time schedules. So it is doable, but the mistake that most people make is they lead with it. So Casey, mm -hmm. you're not leading with this. You are putting your hat in the ring and applying for jobs where you are well suited. Mm -hmm. And if and when you emerge as a top candidate and you receive an offer, then you negotiate for flexibility. Kelly's one of my favorite. One of Kelly's favorite Susanisms is flexibility is compensation. It is not an accommodation. Right. There's no need for them to know why you want a flexible schedule. There's no sob story. There's no quid pro quo. There's no debt here. It's this is part of my compensation. So when any of you are receive an offer, you say the same thing. Once I receive this in writing, I'll review it and get back to you in 24 hours. And then you will always ask for more money. And you will always ask for those little soft things that will make the job better for you. In your case, Casey, flexibility. So assuming that you're willing to take on close to full-time workload and you're not just looking to work like a day a week, you would see the offer, come back with your counter offer and say, thank you so much. I'm really excited. We are almost there. I'd like to see, you know, get our, get, I'd like to see us get the salary closer to X. Um, and I'd like to propose a flexible schedule. This would be, allow me to be the most productive. And this is what I propose. Right. If they happen to be a company that's lived under a rock, especially for the last two years, and they've right. never had flexible right. employees for whatever reason, and they're really reluctant to do it, you could go back and say, I understand. This would be new at your organization. Let's try it as a contingency. Right. Let's do it for four months and see how it works. Let's see if it works for me too. Let's see if it works for you. Mm -hmm. And then we can, you know, cement it or refine it as necessary. But you are not looking for flexible work and you are not mentioning it in a cover letter and you're not mentioning it in an interview. You are waiting until you're offered the job. And negotiating for it. Exactly. Amazing tips because I know flexibility is top of mind. Yep. Yes. Yep. All right, Karen asks, I am hoping to switch careers after a 13 year career gap from market research and technology to a new field. How do I network? So you're looking to do a relaunch and a pivot at the same time, which a lot of our students yes. do. Yes. Um, so what Kelly mentioned earlier, so we definitely want to make sure we include that. Yeah. You want to do some exploring and assessing. Exploring and assessing is a, it's right. kind of a networking thing. You're reaching out to people, but you're not asking for connections. You're not asking for a job. You're not asking for a tour of the company. You just want to learn how did they do it? That's number one, if you're lucky enough to find someone who's pivoted. Number two, you're, you're polling people who work in the industry to find out what are the necessary skills? Right. What's the kind of experience that works out well here? Have you ever training. hired people right. who've come in from a different field into this field? Mm -hmm. The easiest place to make a pivot is a place where you're known. So Karen, if you left your old employer in good stead, even though it was 13 years ago, and you want to, you know, reach back out to your old manager or an old colleague and say, I really would love to come back here, but I'm looking to move from finance into marketing or you know, from coding into client experience, whatever it is, right. and talk to people. You're not, the key is when you're doing explore and assess, you have taken away that perceived burden of, oh God, now I'm gonna have to like bring them in for an interview and they're gonna wanna know who's hiring. I don't wanna do that. You're taking all that away because all you're asking for is information. Yes. And that's how you do it. And it absolutely can be done. The more information you have, not only about the job you want to pivot to, but how your current skills can, can right. morph into that, right. how they can be translated into that, how they might be beneficial. So I'm just thinking of a really good example. I just feel like I just had one just yesterday. Somebody that was coming into it from the experience on the client side. They had all the, the let's, let's say, um, I can't think of an example. Let's say you were in procurement and you were the person responsible for negotiating all of the contracts for healthcare benefits, right? You're the buyer. What better person to pivot 
to become the salesperson right. than the person who understands that, that perspective. So think about how your unique perspective can benefit that next role, yep. but it will require some groundwork because again, well, as we said earlier, you have to connect the dots for me. Yes. I'm not going to do it. Yes. And you, and you have to have a very clear understanding of, of yourself and mm -hmm. who you are and your skills and experience and be able to, to be able to articulate that yeah. more with the language. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Karen. All right. Christina asks, how do you organize your resume to include your break slash community work? What order do you place it? Most recent career experience, education, break, community work. Okay. So hundred percent. You need to go back and watch our webinar that we did for you. Yeah. That, I mean, we literally mm -hmm. we explicitly teach this. The one from March. Uh, I, think April. Was, I actually think it was from December. Oh, it could be the December. But I think you're the high level right now. So Christina, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we are, it was so funny. We had a woman who, took our resume gap lab. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We have and she had already too. taken like a full on career relaunch course from, I don't know where, um, wasn't us. And, and she took the resume gap lab and then she signed up to have a one-on-one -on -one with me. Oh, remember? <laughs> yes, I remember and she was that. in Manhattan. I remember cause I could see the skyline behind her. And, um, I, she said, I just, you know, I, I took the resume gap lab, but I'm struggling because I don't, you know, I'm not, and it's, it's turned out she was struggling because she really knew what she wanted to do. And she didn't know who her audience was. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I think you're, really need to start from scratch again and go back mm -hmm. and maybe consider taking our course because you have to figure that out. You can't just do a stop yeah. me when you hear something you like resume. And then she said, well, I've already taken right. a course. And I was like, oh my God, you left a course without knowing what you want to do. I know. And she said, it was so funny. She said to me, you know why I like the resume gap lab? Because you're bossy and you told me what to do. <laughs> so I was like, okay. It's where bossy the, So I, the reason I'm giving that preamble, I will tell you specifically how to lay it out. And I don't think there's any other way. You start with a profile statement that connects those dots, a nice narrative, three or four sentences that says who you are with specific, active language, unique language. Then you give me a snapshot of your key skills. Skills are not you know, personable team right. player skills are hard learned things that you specifically know how to do well and that you want to continue doing. And then you present your experience in reverse chronology, most present to most, or most recent to least recent. If you have a gap of more than a couple of years, mm -hmm. you're going to want to put your community experience in that area and just call it experience. We call it the blended approach. So an example would be I'm thinking of like um, Teresa, who had like a 20 year gap. Yeah. She was uh, like an officer in the junior league of L.A. She was um, a big, big, um, not a donor, but a, a development person at one of the major museums. So she just put that right at the top experience. And she put, you know, vice president, president of key lead. And she put just like I said on that earlier slide, the context, the scale, the action, the, the accomplishments. And then she made sure, and this is really important, I think it's on one of the slides, I might have skipped it, that the really important experience, which was that she had worked at Viacom or Sony or somewhere big in LA, was above the fold <laughs> on that first page. Mm -hmm. So I'm skimming through, I'm saying, okay, this is kind of good. And I, oh, oh, okay. She cut her shot like this. Where she cut this her is where she yeah. got her, yeah. her start. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So it's the same thing. And education goes last unless you're like 28 or 24. It doesn't really matter. However, if you have a really exceptional academic pedigree, you can, you can hint at it in your summary statement. Yeah. Right. And you're going to put your degrees under your name and the nameplate. So they're going to know that. Yeah. But um, that's the order. So it's summary, key skills pop out, maybe six or eight of them, experience, everything combined, yeah. education. And then if you have room at the end, any publications you've had, maybe interests or community engagement um, in addition on the end. You know what else we're going to include in that email too? I'm just realizing this, but the resume checklist. Okay. So that gives like the, like this will be helpful to you, Christina. Christina. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. All right. Brandy says, what do you recommend for someone who has to remain horribly underemployed during their break? Mm -hmm. Should we include those in our resume and LinkedIn? Do we keep them as blips? It depends on how long the break is. So, Brandy, if you've had a really long break, um, you know, say 10 years, and it's been and you've been doing this part time work and there's not a whole lot else to account for that time, you have to put it in there. Mm -hmm. If you've had a three year gap, probably not worth putting it in there. You can explain, especially COVID really helped right. that because nobody's right. going to question it. So let's play it out because that's an easier solution. Let's play it out if you've had the long gap. 
So if it has been multiple part-time jobs and, and gigs, you could kind of disguise it. Um, one strategy that we use for people who've taken on like one day projects here and part-time work for the husband's company and writing right. the employee manual for my neighbor is kind of create an umbrella company. So for using my name, I might put SRD um, project management and then give a little explanation, you know, took on part-time and freelance projects within the field of, you know, technical marketing, key engagements include or select engagements include boom, boom, boom. If you could somehow veil it that way, if not, then you have to put it on there and you've got to use the language that best explains it. So if you were, let's pick something really low level, like a, a paraprofessional in a high school, a lot of parents do that. A lot of we have, in my kids' school, I have teachers with advanced degrees that are paraprofessionals because it just works. And they are some of the most amazing people, mm -hmm. like the amazing. But the name paraprofessional work. doesn't really mean anything. So maybe you give yourself a slightly different name. You have a little bit of flexibility there. You could put yourself down as a, you know, project manager at, instead of putting the name of the elementary school, the school system, it sounds a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And you could put, you know, developed um, individual academic plans for struggling students, um, use metrics to track performance. So you're going to have to be creative there, um, depending on, on where the line is of time. Yeah. All right. But again, Randy, if you're using the strategy that we recommend, if you're networking with people, you're going to lead with that story. So when you meet with me to network with me, you're going to say, you know what? Oh, I had this great career in, you know, finance. Okay. I took a 10 year break to raise my kids and I just did part time work so I could keep my skills current. And during that time, you know, I kept my tech skills current because I was using some inventory systems or some ERP systems. And, you know, you can use it that way, but you're not going to get through an algorithm. Right. None of you are. None, right. I mean, we wouldn't. Right. Most people can't. Even the perfect person with the perfect conventional resume still only has about a 10% chance. So if you are controlling the narrative and you are using your story, to telling your stories, you get in the door, it's not going to be as big a problem. Right. They're going to understand it. Okay. That helps. Great insight. Yeah. Okay. We have time for one more question. All right. I know. I feel oh. bad here to see the questions. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. That's okay. Sorry. Are there any resources that can help us know ourselves better? I am not sure I want to come back to the same field. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. I um, mean, I'm, do I don't know if we have any freebies on that because that's such a big. Well, we have the goal setting guide. I think we have a goal be, setting yeah. guide. That's that's. Um, but but, um, yeah, there are, and I mean, I hate to be because we don't like to. We actually feel super uncomfortable doing this on here because we know some coaches come on here and they're pitch, pitching the whole time, and that's not, what we do in our course. Yeah, I mean, the whole we really course. do do that in our course, and that is a process. If we're being completely honest with you, I mean, especially if you have been focused on everyone in your orbit for the last however many years, really knowing who you are is a challenge because you haven't been focused on yourself. And are there specific ways? Yes, there are. The first we know, four weeks of the course just doing that. Right. And we know how to guide you through that. And we know what works and we know it will change your life. I mean, we know. We also things. know that people come in thinking they know exactly what they want to do yes. and go through the process and realize that they were just kind of going for the easy, the easy grab. And do those first few weeks of of our course and say, "Oh my gosh, I had no idea that this is where I needed to be spending my time." Yeah. And you know what we understand, especially working with this niche of people who have gaps or people who are pivoting um, or people who are just caregivers focused mm -hmm. on everyone else, giving you the time and space to and and the exercises to really get at a better understanding of who you are and now then what direction you want to go in um is ultimately what makes it's like the secret sauce of our course it's what makes our our students believable memorable and they have the power of that impact and influence that they want to have when they're talking to a hiring manager or they're on a networking call um, so spending that self-reflective time up front is critical mm -hmm. it's just it's really critical and there are there's a very specific path that you can take to do that um, so i mean we could put the vision the ex the vision goal, the goal, goal setting goal guide setting and guys. I mean it, it might give you a little help yeah. but that's yeah. something that's we can't just yeah provide in, in sixty seconds unfortunately yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I know Megan has been very helpful in the chat providing all of these resources. For okay, everybody. thanks, Megan. <laughs> I was going to ask, you know, just to remind everybody, where can we find you? We're going to put it in the chat, all of the links that you've mentioned in the front. Um, and then I know other people were putting their LinkedIn's in the chat. So connect Please. with everybody. Like, feel free yeah, to connect. Yeah, we will. Please connect. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, we want to to us on LinkedIn. We love that when our mom project people, yeah. you know, go find us and come, come yeah. link with us. Yep, same with me. Feel free to find me. Um, you know, Elizabeth, one other thing that's really helpful yeah. and it requires them to kind of dig a little bit, but we have our own YouTube channel and every Monday yes. we put out content and we answer all the kinds of questions that you're mm -hmm. hearing today. And we usually spend 10 minutes um, and that would be, I mean, subscribe to our YouTube channel because a lot of what we're doing today, we do in shorter snippets and every week it's a new question yeah. and um, it's a great way to stay connected with us. It's another freebie. Yeah. And we always learn something new. I always do. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thank you both so much for joining us. This concludes today's session. I hope everyone, you know, learned something new that you can apply to your career search today and beyond. Um, and as a reminder, a recording of this session will be sent to everybody by email afterwards, um, as well as additional resources from Prepare to Launch You. So thank you both again, and thanks yeah. everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Well Take done, care. Elizabeth. Yes. Thank you yes, so you much. Job. We yes. love you guys. Thank you. You guys I are amazing. I love your earrings. I just have to say, I love oh, your earrings. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everyone. Take Thanks, care. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.